It's time to cook with Susan Beck. Well, today we are going to make deviled eggs. And ooh, I have a deviled egg recipe that I just love because it's just got a little kick of spice that I just think makes these eggs so much more flavorful than some deviled eggs that are just kind of bland. And so this is my go-to deviled egg recipe. But first we've got to get some hard boiled eggs. So I'm going to turn this pot of water on. I'm going to move this to my higher um, bigger burner here and I'm going to add like just a tablespoon of white vinegar to that. I've heard that can help with the removal of the shells. The shells. I have farm fresh eggs and they are a little bit harder to get a nicely peeled deviled egg or a hard boiled egg just because of the freshness. When you buy an egg in a store it's weeks old already and thus they do peel better. So one of my tricks is to add a little vinegar to the water Trick number two is I'm going to keep my eggs cold in the refrigerator until this water is boiling and I'm actually ready to put the eggs into it. And the third one is when we take the eggs out of this hot water, we are going to immediately put them into an icy cold bin of water. Into this boiling water with that little bit of vinegar goes eight eggs and we will boil those for 15 minutes. 15 minutes are up, so our eight eggs are going to go into this icy water bath where we're gonna let them cool off really, really well before we try to peel our fresh farm eggs. Well, now that our eggs are hard boiled and they have been peeled, we are ready to make the filling. Now, the main part of the filling is the egg yolk inside. So the egg yolk is the least favorite part of the egg for me until I turn it into deviled eggs mm. and then it becomes the best part. I think it's all the ingredients that get added to these eggs. So I just slice it in half and that egg yolk should just pop right out and we're going to put all of the egg yolks into a food processor. Now you can mash this with a fork if you don't have a food processor. If you do have a food processor, I recommend using it because this way you get a really creamy deviled egg and when you mash with the fork it's easy to still have you know some lumps and bumps left over. Alright so we have eight eggs which will make 16 egg halves. This is one of my go-to recipes when I am taking something like to a potluck or need to take a little appetizer somewhere we've got um, 10 chickens that are all laying an egg a day, so we have plenty of eggs. Also into our food processor, we're going to put one third cup of Miracle Whip or mayonnaise. Now, my family, we're a Miracle Whip family, so you can pick which one you prefer, but a third cup of that, and a tablespoon of mustard. I am not a fan of the yellow mustard. I am using a stone ground today. Sometimes I use a Dijon mustard. I've also used mustard with horseradish before. A tablespoon of that goes in along with about, I don't know, a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of some dried onion flakes and a few little squirts, about a quarter teaspoon of some hot sauce. Mm, Tabasco, is just a must in these. And then you can't make deviled eggs without salt and pepper. If you notice, I've been putting these things in without measuring. Um, I tend to just kind of eyeball it, but I will list the measurements below in my description so that you have more exact ones. And then a teaspoon, which I just fill the inner part of this little lid here usually, of my white vinegar. All right, it's time to pulse this together. I like to just run my spatula around the sides so that I'm sure I'm getting all of that broken up and then just pulse it a few more times. The next thing I think is very important because I think that the seasoning of this is what makes these creamy deviled eggs so good. Mm, and you know, just a touch more salt I think would be good. Maybe a little more pepper. I can taste just a little bit of that Tabasco or hot sauce, so I'm gonna leave that part as is. Maybe just do another quick little whirl 
in my food processor. Well, I'm gonna actually make these look a little fancy today. I'm going to pipe in my egg yolk filling and I'm gonna sprinkle them with some paprika and then I'm going to fry some capers. We'll talk about our garnishes a little more in a minute. Now, it's really just fine if you want to take a spoonful of filling and just place that right into your egg white and fill it with just spoonfuls. That's just great. And you know, when I'm just making them for the family, I tend to do it that way as well. But otherwise, your frosting bags that you would use to decorate a cake or something work great. Another trick for this would be to put it in a Ziploc and trim off the edge of that Ziploc. If you're using your frosting bags, choose a really wide tip because it's easy for a little bit of yolk that's not um, completely broken down to get caught or even one of those onion flakes to get in the way. Oh, I think I might have had one because it just squirted out all over the place on me there. All right, just filling up each of these cavities in the whites of the eggs. Okay, so you could stop the video right here and dig right in and start eating your deviled eggs. In fact, my husband's been out here and he's already had one. But you could also garnish them up with some capers. So I want to drain these capers that are in this briny, salty um, water mixture. And I just want a few of them to sit on the paper towel for a second. We're going to fry these in some olive oil. So you might be saying, well, what is a caper? Mm. A caper is an unripe bud that comes from a caper plant. And they're kind of lemony, they're kind of tart. They really don't taste like green olives, but they, because they're in a, you know, a briny sauce, they have a little bit of that um, taste to them. And if you want to buy them, you'd find them with the pickles and the olives in your grocery store. Right, into my pan on medium heat, I'm going to heat a little olive oil. Now, where did I first have a caper? Well, it was when I saw a recipe from Julia Childs for a lemon caper sauce to put on fish. And mm, I just fell in love with these tart little buds. Now, where did I get the idea to put them on deviled eggs? Well, we were eating at the Hardy House in Madison, this fancy little supper club that has a relish tray, which is common of Wisconsin supper clubs. And what comes on that relish tray? Well, you get some carrots and some dip and some things like that, but you also get a couple deviled eggs that were garnished beautifully with fried capers. It just takes a couple minutes to fry these up. I can see that some of them are kind of popping open and they're getting a little bit brown. I do not want to burn them, so I think I'm about ready to take them off of the hot oil and put them onto a plate lined with paper towels. So I just removed them from the pan with the olive oil where they were frying and put them on a little paper towel just to absorb the extra grease. Mm. This have such a pop of flavor. And I just love when you fry them, how they just get a little bit crisp and the saltiness really comes through um, from that brine. That, um, we drained most of it off, but you know, it wasn't completely gone and you can still tell it was there. All right, I'm sprinkling on some smoked paprika. Regular paprika will work as well, but kind of transition to using the smoke. Again, anytime you smoke something or you heat something, it just kind of changes the flavor and adds a little extra depth to that. All right, each one of these, just, you know, three or four little capers is all you need. Well, chilling these always makes them taste a little bit better too, but I always have to have one before I put them in the fridge. Mm. They're just fantastic. That little bit of hot sauce, Almost lost my deviled egg there. Really gives it a lot of flavor. Um, and that caper just finishes it off with just that little crispy pop, giving it a different texture. No more bland deviled eggs. Try all of these ways to season your 